sitting in the morning sun I'll be sitting when the evening comes Watching the ships roll in And I'll watch them roll away again Sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away ooh, 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 Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Looks like nothing is gonna change Everything still remains the same I can't do what ten people tell me to do so I guess I'll remain the same Yeah, just sitting here resting my bones In this loneliness won't leave me Hey there friends, how's it going? So today we're looking at Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, the Otis Redding classic song. I'll start with some beginner-friendly stuff, and then later on I'll talk about some of the cool... Right? Walk up, down, stuff. And there's some cool pushed chord changes you can do to sort of mimic uh, Redding's rhythm. So uh, let's dive on in and see how to learn this one. Okay, so the verse of this song, again, just a G, two, three, four, B7, to C, two, three, four, to A. And that progression is going to repeat four counts of each of those chords. Now for the A, some folks you might see teach this as A7. Uh, I think that totally sounds great. In some cases, I think it sounds actually better because you're kind of this open third string. Is sort of sustaining or, or it's continuing from the C which also has the open third string so anyway your G G major however you want to play it I like to mute the fifth string just by leaning my ring finger into it it's a nice sort of uh, easier way to play it I have a separate video teaching that voicing the B7 really really worth learning this chord if you don't know it yet you lose it and use it in lots of stuff and you go to a C and then your A or your A7 okay now just four counts of each. So if you just did a down strum on the one count of each measure, right? One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four. Spend time getting into the groove and feeling it, right? Because this song, it's not about fancy virtuoso guitar stuff, right? And you could even sing just doing this one strum. Sitting in the morning sun. And I'll be sitting when the evening comes Yeah, I'm watching the ships roll in Then I'll watch them roll away again All right, let's keep this easy groove going. To the chorus, we're just going to be on... We're going to go from G to E, almost four times. Sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide Then back to E now this time we're gonna go from G, then to A, or A7, then go back to G before we go back to E again, okay? So that chorus is a whole lot of G and E, and then that one time you go to G and A instead. So let me do um, a playthrough of the verse and chorus there. There is a bridge and stuff I'll, I'll talk about, but let me do a strum here on just the one and the three count. So we're gonna get a little bit more of a steady strumming groove here. I'll talk about some uh, additional strumming options in a little bit, okay? So get your tempo going on, and one, Two, ready, go. Sitting in the morning sun. Two, three. I'll be sitting when the evening comes. Two, three, four. Watching the ships roll in. Then I watch them roll away again. Yeah, I'm sitting on the dock of the bay. Watching the tide roll. Okay, then you repeat that, right? I left my home in Georgia. And the second verse and the third verse uh, use that same progression, even though the lyrics change. So you learn the progression once, and then you can sort of, I recommend getting into this slow, right? Don't race to the complicated strumming stuff and all the walk up and walk down stuff. Really get that groove, memorize the progressions. It's not that much to memorize, in my opinion, right? And I do have the song sheet, of course, if you want to print it out. It's a nice way to sort of follow along. Now, let's talk about some strumming and some ways to spice this up a little bit, okay? Um, I just showed you, you know, doing a strum on the one, two, three, four. Always great to start with this. 
this, just to learn the progression, to get comfortable with the sort of, uh, you know, terrain of the song, right? Now, as far as some more full strums, one you could do is like kind of the more folky strum, which is like a down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. It works okay for this song. Um, this is this song is so much defined by just the, the vibe and Redding's voice and that lead guitar just sprinkled in the background and the piano and the nice drum tracks. That there's, it's not just a guitar driven song, so you don't want to do too much with your strumming. Now, this strumming pattern, down, down, up, up, down, up, I'll say this. If you listen to the intro of the song, Otis Redding's recording, listen in that first couple measures, you can hear those up strums, right? Down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, up, up. Put the song on, you will hear those. It's so distinctive. And that can kind of give you that like audio or oral like anchor to sort of, you know, connect to when, you, when you're strumming. So if I was to do that strum, I'm gonna keep it real chill, nice and brushy strums, okay? That would sort of sound like this. So I'll do a few measures, one, da, da. Da, 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 one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and sitting in the morning sun. I'll be sitting when the evening comes, watching the ships roll in, and I watch them roll away again. And we go to the chorus. I'm sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll. the bay, wasting time. Okay, so that's how you could do that one. Again, try to keep it light and brushy if you can. I know that's a really difficult thing to do at first, especially, but you don't have to strum all the strings all the time. You can sort of come in and just grab a few, hit a few on your different up strums and down strums. Learn the pattern. Get your wrist ready or used to doing this, right? But then when you get used to it, you can kind of, with your thumb and your forefinger, sort of decide when to engage and sort of pick at certain strings, right? It's one of those things you gotta just spend time with, but it'll come with time, okay? Now, another strumming pattern you could do is one where it's basically constant up and down strums. It's more like a bass up, down, up, bass up, down, up, bass up, down, up, bass up, down, up. This one's tricky in that you have to target the bass note of the string, but it allows you to kind of, have some difference between the bass stuff. Right, this is the first four chords, just the bass notes. And that's um, contrasted with the more trebly stuff on the thinner strings, right? So here's what that would sound like, right? So, uh, one, two, and ready, go. And sitting in the morning sun, I'll be sitting when the evening comes. Just watching the ships roll in. I watch them roll away again, yeah. I'm sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll away. Ooh, 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 ooh. sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting So that's another option you can sort of try out there. So with what I showed you, you know, I show you the chord shapes, the progressions for the verse and chorus, and um, a few strumming patterns. So try those out and really, you know, spend some time with it. I honestly have been playing this song for a few days now in a row, and I keep kind of switching up what I like doing the best as far as strumming. So I want to give you a few options here. Now there is a bridge to this song. I want to include this as well, right? Uh, this is a four a measure, uh, it's four lines, I'm sorry. So in the bridge, we're going to have some quicker changes, meaning we're not going to be on every chord for four full counts, right? We're going to be um, G to D to the C two three four. Do that again. G to D to C two three four. Now do it again. D to C, but then go back to G, and then we go to F two three four to D two three four. Um, now for context, let me sort of give you the, the vocals or the, the vocals, the lyrics about what's going on there so you understand the vibe of the song. So that ends just on the end of the chorus, right? Sitting on, sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting time. End of the second chorus, then it's... Looks like nothing is gonna change Everything still remains the same I can't do what ten people tell me to do so I guess I'll remain the same, yeah. Sitting here resting my bones, 
then it goes into a verse and there's one last chorus and then he whistles at the end, right? So um, I showed you the progression here. You're gonna have to use some different strumming here, partially because the chords are changing uh, more often. And you wanna make sure that you have a nice downbeat whenever your chord changes, because you really wanna capture that clean transition, especially the bass note. So what I recommend doing is learning this pattern, which is a, a down, down, up, down, down, up, one, two, and three, four, and and what you can do is use this pattern wherever there's a measure where you're playing two different chords. So for example, the first two measures is G to D, then to C. Then you repeat that. So let's, if you look at just those two measures, whenever you're going from G to D, you wanna use this new pattern I showed. You write the G and to D, then to C. And on C, do the regular strumming pattern. So. Okay. G, D, to C. Now, if I did this, if I sort of vocalized the strumming, it'd be a down, down, up, down, down, up, regular pattern. Down, down, up, down, down, up, regular. Down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, regular. Down, up. When I say regular, I'm talking about this sort of folky pattern here, there. So that's basically uh, the bridge. Now the end, there is this F. Now, how do you play F if you can't do the full six string bar? I always say, I like doing this middle four string version, right? Three, three, two, one. I'm sort of muting the thickest and the thinnest string just with my thumb and with my sort of forefinger over here. That way I can sort of strum all six strings and not have a worry in the world as far as making a, I don't want, you don't want, you don't want these E notes to ring, right? So mute those strings. Um, you could do the full six string bar. You could just do strings three, two, and one. You could do an F major seven, which is third fret, second fret, first fret, open. Right, leave that highest string open, then go to the D. Either of those will work. As I always say, I have a, a nice lesson teaching you seven different ways to play F that don't require barring. And I just showed you a few of them, but check out that lesson if you, if you really wanna add some of those to your repertoire. Because honestly, this version of F, I wish I knew this years ago, because honestly, it's uh, I only saved this bar chord for situations where you really need it. But in either case, when it comes to the strumming of those last two measures, I like to sort of, you know, like down, 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 down. It kind of just gives a nice like launch pad, right? And that bridge is kind of the highest energy part of the song, arguably. So um, I recommend that. Um, okay, so I talked about uh, the basics. Strumming, chord progression, chord shapes, all the, the whole structure of the song. Now let's get into some of the fun stuff you can do to sort of um, add some intermediate advanced stuff here. But the real fun part about this one is the uh, walk-ups. And walk-downs in the verse. You can have a lot of fun with this, even if you're sort of relatively new to guitar, because there's no real strumming necessarily. It's just you do a bass note, a single strum, you do that walk up, right? I'll talk about the walk up in a second, and then C, and a full strum of A. And you could just do that in a loop. It has a really like bluesy-ish kind of groove. I really enjoy playing it. So here's what you're gonna do. The, the, the quick version of the walk ups is this. For the G, both the walk up and the walk down are four notes only, which is nice. You're gonna start on the bass note of the chord you're coming from. So you're, if you're coming from a G to a B7, you're starting on a G, right? And you're gonna end on this B. This is a B bass note, because we know that if you think of a B minor chord, or you think of a B7 chord, both those chords have in common the root note of a B. It's a great way to just memorize the name of notes in general in open position is think of the chords you play and think of the lowest note in the chord Whatever that alphabet letter is, that's the name of that note. So this is a B, this is a G, okay? Let's talk about notes. Now you're effectively gonna walk up from the G to the B, and it's like a chromatic walk up, meaning you're you're literally stepping on every stair on the way up. This is stairs. So you're playing every note um, between G and B. So, well, that's technically not true because you're skipping, you're skipping the, the G sharp or the A flat, and you're going from, Man, I'm just the um, best teacher ever. That's the, the sort of notes you're playing. G, G, A, B flat, B, okay? But you also can play that up here. Okay, third fret on the low E string, open fifth string, first fret fifth string, second fret fifth string, okay? And then two and three and four and one and two and three. One and when you go down to the C to the A, that is a chromatic walk down. C 
to uh, B to B flat to A. So you're just sort of hitting those four notes in a row in the cluster. There's nothing, there's no notes in between the C and the A you didn't play here. Okay, so just practice just. Play the chord, then walk it down. But make sure you play the, the final note. Right? This is like the runway the plane lands on. Play that note cleanly before you do the strum. Okay, so G. Then to C. Okay, that's the sort of structure of the walk down. Now let's look at the timing here. I have this tabbed out in my um, song sheet here on page three. This might look crazy, like a lot of stuff going on here, but it is what it is. I wanted to include this. This is like my third draft where, where I really boiled this down to what I think you need to know without making it too complicated. The main idea here is if you ignore the counting and the strumming, like I just said, play the bass note, strum the full chord, then you do the four note walk up, then strum the B7 chord. Now if you want to, you can add some filler strums there. You'll want to do that when you're staying in time though. Then you go to the C, Drum some A. All right, I'm counting now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And Okay, now those filler strums, those are meant to be light and brushy or bust. You don't want to overdo it with those, right? Um, uh, so that's an important thing. You can omit those if you want. And the other important part that this brings up is this idea of what are called pushed chord changes, right? Where when we switch that B7 and we switch that A, technically, you listen to the Otis Redding version of this song, he's going to those chords on the eighth note just before the one count, meaning they're happening an eighth note earlier than you expect, right? Or we kind of expect them two and three and four and, right? This is when everything is going as planned, kind of just three, four, everything's on the one count. All the changes are on the one count, but one, two and three and four and one. That C, in that, uh, that C to A transition and the G to B7 that transition happens earlier and it kind of like it almost catches you off guard or catches your ear off guard and in the song it's used very very subtly i think the drum is kind of has like a very straight beat like i'm playing here but listen you can mix them My point is the drum beat does not incorporate this push into the rhythm. So you can kind of combine a straight drum beat with a sort of push chord change on your guitar. I hope that's the right use of the word straight there. But um, so this is evident with these walk ups and walk downs. Now how do you strum this in the actual song? I do have this on my song sheet as well. This is tricky to do, but I just want to show it to you for completionist sake. You could go through the same chord progression, but I would use this strumming pattern. It's a two measure strumming pattern, right? Uh, down, 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 up, down, up, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up. Notice how the chord changes to the B7 and the A are happening on the off, up beat, right? Down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up. One, two, three, and four, and, and two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and, and two. And four. Okay? Now you could sing the song like that if you wanted to with just strumming, right? Sitting in the morning sun. I'll be sitting when the evening comes. Watching the ships roll in. Then I'll watch them roll away again. Okay? Um, you could also do that in the chorus if you want to. Sitting on the dock of the bay. Watching the tide roll away Ooh, sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time So 
all the times I switched to the E and the A in the chorus, I was always doing an upstrum. Okay? Now, you don't have to do that if you don't want, but let me show you this, which is um, a playthrough now of me doing the walk ups and walk downs with the push course changes, chord changes, and me just singing the whole song. So this is how it sounds when you put it all together. That's my ultimate point here. I'm going to put this drum track on to see if this will work for me, and you can get this drum track on my Patreon post. It's a straightforward track I made in Garage Band, but it's like 10% slower than the album version. Matches the vibe of their drums, though. So let's do it. Sitting in the morning sun I'll be sitting when the evening comes Watching the ships roll in And I'll watch them roll away again Sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away ooh, 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 ooh. Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time I, I, I. I left my home in Georgia I'm headed for the Frisco Bay Cause I've had Like nothing gonna come my way I'm just sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away Ooh, Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Looks like nothing is gonna change Everything still remains the same I can't do what ten people tell me to do well. So I guess I'll remain the same Yeah, just sitting here resting my bones In this loneliness won't leave me alone Two thousand miles I roam Just to make this dock my home Watching the tide roll away ooh, 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 Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time All right, so that is the playthrough there. I hope you dug this. You can get the drum track on my Patreon post for this. Just look for the link in the description of this video. You can play along and, uh, you know, it's a good backing track. It makes you feel a little bit more like you're playing with Otis Redding's band. And of course, I have the song sheet um, and my members of Song Notes on my Patreon page will get a discount if you do pick up that song sheet or any of my other song sheets. And of course, I have my instructional PDFs as well. So um, those are all available to you to help you learn the concepts you need to play all your favorite songs. So thanks for watching, everybody. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Take care. And until then, bye-bye.